Welcome everyone to um, this event uh, called China's Surveillance State, Protecting Procurement from Companies Linked to Genocide and Oppression. Uh, it's a heavy topic, it's a serious topic, um, but thank you all for coming and taking, taking an interest. Oh, perfect timing. We've, we've, um, we've started a little bit late, but we've got, um, we'll get going and we've got a great set of speakers today. Uh, I'll do a little bit of an introduction uh, to the topic, and then I'll introduce the speakers, and then we'll hear from each of them for about five, seven minutes or so each, and then we'll open it up to questions and discussion. Um, it's clear that the, the golden era of UK-China relations, as proclaimed by David Cameron and co. in 2017, is over. Um, there's the ongoing and systemic crackdown in Hong Kong. In fact, there was, a, there was another fringe event uh, uh, on, on that issue just, just a couple of hours ago. Um, we're seeing increasing threatening, uh, saber-rattling behavior towards Taiwan. And of course, there is, and, the, and it is strange to say out loud, really, but there is an ongoing genocide in Xinjiang, in China. Uh, I'm not saying that, uh, or I'm not just saying that. It's been declared by the UK Parliament. There was a, a People's Uyghur Tribunal held in London, um, which heard evidence over two sessions in 2021 and concluded that the CCP is committing an ongoing genocide in relation to uh, birth control measures and sterilization measures of, of the Uyghur people. And of course, the, the UN report has just been published with, with similar findings. But what we are looking at is not a 20th century genocide of the type that we were, we were so familiar from history books, but a 21st century genocide. Um, and that's important really for two reasons that we're talking about today. One is this genocide is taking place in an era of free trade and globalization where Corporate supply chains extend all around the world and, you know, funds raised in London are, are used to, to uh, sorry, f funds are raised by overseas companies in London and supply chains of, of manufactured goods and raw materials can make their way from one side of the world to, to the markets in the UK, which wasn't the case really in the 21st century, in the 20th century in the same way. And secondly... Uh, it's a 21st century genocide in the sense that the Chinese state can harness the powers of modern technology and is doing so. Things like facial recognition and even genome sequencing. Um, but despite all of this, Chinese firms that are implicated in data privacy breaches, technology-enabled human rights abuses, are still being awarded public sector contracts here in the UK. So in this event, we're going to discuss the implications for public procurement, what can be done to protect our personal uh, data, and how we can stop human rights abusers benefiting from UK taxpayers. We'll talk about what's happening in Xinjiang, uh, and more widely in China. We'll talk about technology and, and what technology is being used and, and how. We'll talk about the efforts that have been made by um, parliamentarians and others in the UK to try to tackle this, from the genocide amendment to the trade bill that was um, efforts around that from a year or so ago to the new sanctions regime we have uh, and various Chinese officials who've been sanctioned and, and then there may be more to come. And we'll talk about what more needs to be done. Um, perhaps import bans, perhaps a new human rights due diligence law, which requires companies to audit their supply chains to identify human rights abuses and root them out, um, and perhaps public procurement. Sajid Javid has banned Hikvision, which is a Chinese company involved in facial recognition but that sells um, cameras and camera software, from bidding for new Department of Health and, so and Social Care contracts due to ethical concerns. And, uh, but other similar Chinese companies 
um, for example, genome sequencing giant BGI group still won PCR testing contracts and is bidding for future contracts. There's an upcoming procurement bill in Parliament, and um, there's a proposed amendment to that bill which would ban companies that are involved in this sort of behavior from being able to, to bid for public contracts. Uh, and it seems that that's, a, that's potential, a potential new front that those of us who are interested in um, campaigning for human rights around the world and the, particularly the plight of the Uy Uyghurs can push on. And it seems like a key opportunity. So that's just setting the scene. Let me now introduce the fantastic speakers that we have today. To my right is Rahima Mahmoud, who's a Uyghur activist and the director of the World Uyghur Congress uh, in the UK and the head of the Stop the Uyghur Genocide campaign. To her right is uh, Siobhan McDonough MP, who's an MP, who's, Labour MP, who's been very active on China issues and was involved in uh, the genocide amendment when that was happening a year or so ago, uh, and is a member of the Interparliamentary Alliance on China. We don't actually have Big Brother Watch with us today for various reasons, but between us, we'll be able to, to cover what, what, what they would have been saying, I'm sure. Uh, to my left is Catherine West MP, Shadow Minister for Asia and the Pacific. So her brief, of course, in, well, it includes a very large area, but it includes China. Uh, and Taiwo Owatemi MP, who is on the Health Select Committee and has a particular interest, I understand, in potentially procurement issues in relation to healthcare and the Department of Health and Social Care. Uh, and we'll hear now from each of them in that order. So if I can turn first to Rahima to set the scene, as it were. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for giving me this, this opportunity to speak about the plight of my people. And this afternoon, I speak to you as an activist, a translator, a singer, and an Uyghur which means I am representing a community fighting genocide. As we sit here today, millions of my fellow Uyghurs are being held in a system of mass detention in my homeland that the UN recently said could amount to crime against humanity. A high-tech surveillance network is terrorizing the region children are separated from their parents and placed in state-run orphanages. Forced sterilization and abortions have been carried out as part of a mass birth control, birth prevention program that a credible independent tribunal led by Sir Jeffrey Nice determined last year amounted to genocide. Widespread forced labor program have seen our suffering turned to profit. As a translator, I have heard dozens of testimonies from those who have survived the notorious 21st century concentration camps. I have listened to young men that have been hung up and beaten for days, and women whose bodies have been brutalized by sexual violence. I have seen how survivors can be destroyed by their trauma. As an Uyghur, every testimony is etched into my mind, each one a reminder of what all of us in exile fear our loved ones back home are facing. I have not spoken to my own brothers and sisters for nearly six years now. I think about them and whether they are safe every single day. But as an activist, I have to believe that together we can save my community from extinction. The shameful reality is that this country is tied to these atrocities. And that those ties are no closer than in Britain's supply chains. 
Forced labor is central to this genocide. Uyghurs are forced to work whilst in detention in internment camps. Forced to pick cotton and other products through state conscripted labor and others are taken hundreds of miles from home in forced labor transfers. The products of this state-sanctioned modern slavery enter the UK every week. Some industries like cotton, aluminium, solar, and electronics are more complicit than others. But this is a global crisis. It is important to understand that this is not just about creating a pool of cheap labors, but is designed to tear apart the fabric of Uyghur society and break our spirit. It is a calculated tool of genocide. CCTV cameras made by companies that facilitating the Orwellian surveillance of my people litter the streets of this country. Companies like High Vision, DAFA, who have marketed tech that can identify Uyghur features and interrogation devices that type out confessions, continue to enjoy public and private contracts here in the UK. So we know the products of severe human rights violations are flooding this country's market. We also know that taxpayer money is being spent on these goods. But the key thing is that we can do something about it. Political leaders from council to national government must introduce legislation to seriously tackle this crisis. Corporations must be held to account on their refusal to read their supply chains of Uyghur forced labor. And public bodies must set an example by ending procurement of these products. Sometimes when I speak at events, I am asked if this is real. If what people have heard in the news is an exaggeration. To that, I ask people to listen to those of us that are experiencing this firsthand. I can understand that this level of hum inhumanity is almost incomprehensible. Even for my people, it feels like a nightmare. But we do not have the luxury of skepticism. We know this is real because we live it every day. But today I feel hopeful sat here because I know that the Uyghur struggle is a natural cause of the labor movement. It is about protecting workers, defending women's body autonomy, and speaking for those who have been silenced by the state. The collective voice of your movement is historic and strong. The Labour Party has been standing up for communities like mine throughout its existence. Commitment to human rights is fundamental to its identity. Now the Uyghurs need you to live up, live up to that history and use that power by standing with us in our struggle. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, China has committed genocide against the Uyghur people in Xinjiang. That was the definitive conclusion of the Uyghur Tribunal in London that has already been referred to. It's a definition that governments around the world, including our own, have been nervous to arrive at because of the international ramifications but the Chinese government's actions must be stated for what they are, an, an apparatus of control, 
a systematic and calculated programme of ethnic cleansing against the Uyghur people. And we need to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be complicit? Where is your own money invested? Do you bank with HSBC? What about your pension? Last year, over 100 MPs joined me in writing directly to the chairman and trustees of our own pension fund, calling on them to divest from Chinese companies accused of complicity in gross human rights violations. And similar concerns were shared by our staff and their scheme including investments in Flytech, a company blacklisted in the USA for its involvement in the mass incarceration of over a million Uyghur Muslims. It is the responsibility of all us, all of us, to ask these difficult questions. But there can be no doubt of the responsibility of the state. The creeping influence of security on genomic giant like BGI Group cannot be ignored. It is unforgivable to find evidence of genocide on the one hand, while awarding public service contracts to firms implicated in human rights abuses and technology-enabled oppression with the other. Whilst the US has their Department of Commerce entity list, the UK has no legislation to prohibit UK firms from investing in firms perpetrating human rights abuses in the Uyghur region. The consequences are all too real. Like genome sequencing giant BGI Group, who held PCR testing contracts with the Department of Health, despite a report published by the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence in the United States, which concluded that BGI may be serving as a global collection mechanism for Chinese government genetic databases. Or take Pike Vision, one of the principal Chinese companies involved in the construction of Chinese surveillance state and the camps that house over a million Uyghurs in Xinjiang. And yet an extraordinary 31% of UK police forces use Pike Vision tech. Recent concerns have been brought to my attention regarding smart meters. Who would have thought smart meters were involved? A growing proportion are made in China by a state-owned company called Kefa Technology and are being brought up by UK-based energy companies for installation in our homes. I will be using all parliamentary routes to investigate that urgently. So whether it's multinational financial institutions like HSBC, public sector contracts, or lucrative pension fund investments, it's the undeniable responsibility of both individual and state to ensure that we are not complicit in genocide. If we look away, History will condemn our unforgivable cowardice and ask why those in power did not act. Because this time, no one can say that we didn't know. Thank you very much, Chair. It's always a pleasure to follow the campaigning work of the member for Mitchell and Morden and also to recall her important work on workers' rights in Marks and Spencers. So she's got form on retail and the, cotton, uh, the sale of cotton products um, over many, many years. Um, it was also really lovely to hear from Rahima again, which is always painful for her to have to repeat the terrible attacks that have occurred on the Turkic people in the Xinjiang area. And I'm particularly pleased that it's the SME which is so carefully and fully supported by uh, Ibrahim and his group, and traditionally great um, members of the public and members of civic society who have long stood up for human rights. So this comes together very nicely today. 
Sir Geoffrey Nice QC or Casey did underline the unspeakable horrors of arbitrary detention, forced sterilisation, forced transportation of the workforce in the Xinjiang region. And we do have to see that within the context of the Belt and Road Initiative by the Communist Party in China. And if Silke from Big, Vision, Big Brother Watch was here today, she would be bringing along her report, which she launched in Parliament together with Rahima, myself, and Lib Dem and Tory backbenchers as well. All of us extremely concerned about the findings in that report, which show that there are so many public sector groups using Pipe Vision, which is a technical application which captures data and which is being used consistently in uh, home office and in local government. And there is no strategy at the top of government to root this out. We had a recent debate in Parliament on products which have come through the Department of Health and there was a strong statement in the Department of Health about the procurement of protective equipment following the work which Rahima has campaigned on and which the likes of Siobhan and other very outspoken backbenchers have forced the government into, which is a U-turn on supply of PPE from those departments. And I know that Taiwo will go into that in more detail. But the point that I would like to make, and which I have made already today in a different forum, but on the question of China and the UK, is a sheer lack of strategy. How could it be right that the Department of Health has a very robust statement because they've been made to develop one, whereas the Home Office is allowing the police to have CCTV um, oh. and other technical equipment. Um, Chair, I think will we continue, yeah, yeah. or if everyone That's, can see us? <laughs> this um, might be a CCP plot right. to stop our, <laughs> stop our discussion. <laughs> yeah. Let's just quickly see if Ibrahim knows what no. to do. I think I'll continue. Yeah, I, I don't need my notes because I, I know my, my lines. Um, but the point is that what we want from the government is a coordinated strategy which gives business, which gives technology companies and which gives public bodies a security and knowledge that what they need to do is to take action and to set out guidelines so that everyone who is in procurement knows exactly what to do. Just to give you one brief example, in the borough of Tower Hamlets, Big Brother Watch, in its audit of all local authority companies, has shown that Tower Hamlets has decided not to uh, have procurement from the Xinjiang area or from High Vision. So it's perfectly possible to do but why should it boil down to a little bit here and a little bit there when we have a government which is meant to have a coordinated strategy on business, on procurement, on technology? We know that technology in terms of national security is a major area where we need to take more action, where we need to be more aware, where we need to stop being as naive as what we have been in the past. And yet the government refuses to take a leadership role in this. So for the meantime, it will depend on campaigners and on those of us who are working on government bills, such as the procurement bill which are coming forward. And we will not disappoint. I can guarantee that Siobhan will be there making a speech and holding the government to account. We will be working in the lobbies to ensure that some of the um, government uh, party, who are not in the government but who are in the um, Tory party, will vote with us on that particular amendment, and that we may even be able to have meetings in advance so that we can get it on the face of the bill. And we have a lot of support from Ray Collins, who is our spokesperson in the House of Lords, who will be standing up and once again making the point about national security, about procurement from uh, other parts of the Asia-Pacific region where we don't have the same national security concerns and indeed where we can um, develop other supply chains. There's no reason why we have to be forced into this position. We can have clean hands on this, but it does require the government to do its homework, to develop a proper strategy, and to have human rights, a 
at its core around its trade policy. So, Chair, thank you for this opportunity. I look forward very much to the questions that are coming. I hope Silke can get a copy of this virtually mm -hmm. so that she can hear that her report is being so um, carefully um, read by colleagues here at the Labour Party conference um, and that it is informing the work that we do in Parliament so that we can be um, free of uh, modern slavery and free of the depredations that are occurring in the Xinjiang region when we have public sector organisations procuring important technology and uh, public protective equipment through the NHS. Thank you very much. We'll keep going. I think there's, there's just enough light. Keep it's going. A bit like <laughs> bedtime story or something. <laughs> so, uh, So over the recent years, we've watched the horror of a story that has been emerged about the difficult treatments of the Uyghur Muslims and other minorities in China, and the systemic oppression that the Uyghur face is heavily dependent on the British white court institution that of China is strong and resistant. And China is taking the initiative to keep the level, and this was recently highlighted by the New York Times in Brazil. China's ambition to collect a staggering amount of personal data from every individual is more expansive than we can use to know. Very tracking sites are now everywhere. The police are creating one of the largest DNA databases in the world, and our authorities are building upon the social recognition technology to collect more information from the general public. And it doesn't need a further go to find that the same kind of company pioneering Now, this concern is a moral concern, it's an ethical concern, but it's also a security concern. And currently, it seems as if we have not developed a full legal duty to plan properly. And it's good to hear about the right aspects of the Commission, my Tower Hamlet Council, and um, the actively trying uh, not to procure any. Um, any Meanwhile, the UK's health and safety agency 
ones that are cunningly made every night and tested on the back. This is the idea. Again, a child on the front of the which is a legend of the use of the symbols of the Americans. Of this same company comes a report of global genetic and data selection companies called Chinese State. And yet, was the latest business partner of the board in the case of tech and technology project. Tackling these challenges head on is consistent with our thematic interest in protecting the ordinary national security interests and democratic values. And that is an element to the health and care board with respect to the advancement of NHS, goods and services, and the modernization of the human capital is the right step and it's the right direction. But more needs to be done to cover investment, research, procurement, companies, and human rights. If we do not do this, then essentially we are creating a new hole for these companies to, to offer a better. So, that is all. I would thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be part of the panel. Thank you. Thank you.